Hey guys, Enlightened Arts coming at you guys with garden update number nine, organic soil. So, this is a pretty broad topic that I could probably spend a couple hours talking about, but today I'm going to go into the basics of my growing style, um, covering uh, the amendments I add to the soil as well as techniques I use to provide nutrients to the plants at different stages of its life and just like little other tricks that I use or techniques. Um, so every gardener faces the question, uh, what kind of soil should I use? And that really depends on what kind of growing style you want to adopt. If you want to adopt a completely organic style, um, that's going to limit your soil options slightly. If you're going to go synthetic and don't mind having uh, synthetic fertilizers and stuff in your plants, then you can go that route and that has a ton of options. But for the purpose of this video and my growing style, I grow 100% organically. So I'm just going to be skipping over the synthetic topic. And... So there's a couple options for uh, getting your soil when you want to grow organically. Um, what you can do is you can always just go out and buy a high quality bag mix. Uh, Fox Farms uh, makes a good blend. Whitney Farms makes a good blend too. And there's a couple other good ones out there. You just got to look around and find what works for you. Uh, the next option and the best one is soil that you compost yourself. Um, using matter, uh, old soil from beds, or just taking soil from the ground and conditioning it. Uh, the third option is to find a local farmer or nursery that has high quality compost. Uh, that's also, that's probably your second best option uh, due to the fact that uh, anytime you compost soil, it's gonna be colonized with uh, a lot of beneficial micro life that's gonna help your plants in uh, many different ways and with different processes that they need to go through in order to grow and thrive. So beneficial fungi and uh, the micro life is something I'll be covering a little bit later in this and we'll get into that. So once you have your soil, it's time that you need to amend it just so you can provide your plants with the nutrients they need to thrive in the conditions you provide. Some of these nutrients have a high nitrogen content and actually have to be composted in the soil for around 30 days. Otherwise, they might harm your plants. So, we're just going to go ahead and get right into it and start. Um, this right here in the back is soft rock phosphate. It's made by Dr. Earth and is a great slow release source of phosphorus. Um, as you can see, the NPK numbers are zero and two, or zero two zero, and that is perfect for you know just supplying a very slow, steady amount of phosphorus, just pure phosphorus to your plants. Sometimes, if you're ever having trouble with blooms, or if I am, like if I have something that's not flowering, which I'll cover in another video, I'll just go ahead and top dress with this, and it usually provides some pretty spectacular results. So the next thing that I put in is over here, and that's dolomite lime. And dolomite lime is a fast-acting uh, fast nutrient that, sur that supplies magnesium and calcium, as well as like other micronutrients. It also has a uh, pH buffer buffering effect similar to the oyster shell flower. And uh, that just keeps the uh, pH from dropping too low when the organic matter in your soil mix starts to decompose. Next up, Dr. Earth Bag Guano. This is a nitrogen powerhouse element. Um, it has, as you can see, the MPK is 10, 3, and 1. So it has a little bit of phosphorus, but its primary, its primary function is to provide new, uh, nitrogen for plant growing its stems and leaves and uh, just foliage. And 
uh, one of the things that this adds in addition to the nitrogen and the phosphorus and the small bit of potassium is it adds some really good micro life to the soil and it will uh, really help your plants uptake uh, nutrients and the specific micro life that's inside here I believe helps with the uptake of nitrogen. So next up and something that I think is really important in any growing setup personally is the oyster shell products which we have here. You have the uh, down to earth oyster shell flower uh, flying the OMRI tag which is the Organic Materials Review Institute. If you ever see this tag on a product it's completely organic and safe to use in your grow setup. So what these, what these two products do is they do the same thing, just one of them is fast release and one of them is slow release. The oyster shell flower is just a, a powdered version of these shells. So it's more of a fast acting calcium source. And it also has a bunch of other great effects like pH buffering and not to mention the fact that uh, the microlife in your soil love calcium. So this is gonna feed them and keep them happy. The crust oyster shells um, do a bunch of things, not only all the stuff that the oyster shell flowers does, but it also adds to the soil structure in a good way and helps with drainage as well as giving organic matter for the roots to cling on to, to use for support. So the oyster shell flower is definitely a, uh, they're, both of these are extremely important, but the oyster shell, the crust oyster shells do a couple other things that this can't just because of the texture. So this next amendment is extremely important as well. And this right here is green tang. And what this does is this provides the plant with all 84 trace uh, vitamins and minerals. And that's extremely important, especially in the early stages of the plant's life for it to come up happy with everything it needs to thrive in its new conditions. So I always add this to my soil as well as into my uh, hydroponic systems and it's very crucial. I keep this uh, stocked up at all times. The next thing I wanted to talk about is right here. This is Happy Frog Fruit and Flower Fertilizer and it's made by Fox Farms. It has a pretty standard MPK. Uh, 584 that's something typical you'll see for a fruit and flower just slightly more uh, phosphorus than nitrogen and uh, some potassium and uh, this also has active soil microbes one thing you'll learn as you begin to grow organically is that cultivating the micro life that's contained within your soil is just as important as focusing on your plants and giving them the nutrients they need because those fungi are really going to benefit your plants in the long run in several ways which I'll get into shortly Next up, I wanted to talk about worm castings, and that's an incredibly important organic uh, amendment to any grow setup, especially if your goal is to provide uh, a healthy and good environment for your micro life. Um, worm castings is just so rich with different microbes and amoebas and things. So now that I've brought up the subject of the micro life in the soil, what I wanted to talk about now is probably one of the most important amendments that I put in my soil mix, and that is the mycorrhizae fungi. And the reason that this fungi is so special is because of the symbiotic relationship that it forms with the roots of plants. And it's a naturally occurring fungi present in all uh, soil with plant life. It needs living roots to survive. And um, what it does is it finds nutrients contained in the soil and it delivers them to the plant's roots in exchange for simple carbohydrates that they consume to fuel uh, their activities. Um, a couple of recent studies have actually shown that the fungi's relationship isn't all that well understood and is probably more complex than we think because uh, recently during a study it was noted that some of the mycorrhizal fungi had began to hoard nitrogen from plants' roots and using the network that it had formed around several plants, it used this network to distribute the nutrients to the plants that needed them the most. 
uh, when the nitrogen was uh, scarce in the soil. And I thought that was extremely interesting. And uh, another thing I thought was interesting is that uh, the plant's roots can actually switch back and forth from relying solely on its root system for nutrient uptake um, to using the mycorrhizal network when the nitrogen levels in the soil become depleted over time. Uh, the fungi primarily colonizes the plant's root system um, and they receive glu uh, glu glucose and sucrose. It's been a while since biology, my pronunciation's off. But um, <laughs> in return, the plants receive uh, the mycelium, uh, the mycorrhizal that forms the mycelium. And this mycelium has a much higher uh, absorptive capacity for water and uh, other mineral nutrients just because it has a, a much larger surface area and is much finer than the, uh, the roots of the plants. Um, and an, another additional thing that this does for your soil is that um, sometimes plants can be unable to absorb uh, demineralized phosphate ions in the soils that have a basic pH. And uh, the mycelium can access these ions and absorb them and then make them available to the plant. So logically you can assume that the mycofungi can have a really beneficial impact on your plants during flowering when they need uh, phosphorus. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting after reading up on the, mycelial fun uh, the mycelium and the mycorrhizal fungi was that um, it can be used in soilless mixes to help bring the plants nutrients when it needs it. So now that I have this information, I'm definitely going to be adding it to the hydroponic system right here. I've already added it into this one, this this uh, bed here, because the uh, that uh, romaine was transplanted in a soil plug just directly into the system. So I'm hoping once I add that to the uh, cucumbers net pot, uh, it'll start to develop even more blooms. My last video, I mentioned that uh, it didn't have as solid blooms. And uh, I'll go into that in another video here shortly before the end of the night. But needless to say, they have bounced back and have recently, for a reason I'll go into, provided some spectacular blooms. So now that you know uh, what I put in my soil and how the, the mycorrhizal fungi uh, plays a role, uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention was fertilizing and using things like organically brewed teas to water your plants which uh, in my experience the plants absolutely love because it's full of chock full of uh, micro life feeds the uh feeds the the ecosystem in the soil and just makes for some very very happy plants now an organic tea is made when you take something such as like worm castings or even this big bloom here and uh Put it in an opaque container, one that does not uh, let light into it, and using just an aquarium air stone, you aerate the tea. And what that does is it oxygenates uh, the water and brings a lot of the microbes and the uh, the various fertilizers to life, and uh, really makes them uh, allows them to thrive. And so, once you bubble a tea for a couple days with uh, worm casings, which is most usually the base for almost all the organic teas I make and uh, water water them every probably every third or uh, fourth watering using a uh, two days on one day off schedule and it just provides fantastic results for the plants so now that you guys know how I grow and what I put in my soil. I just wanted to give you guys just a quick tour of what I got going on out here in these pots. Uh, right here is some sweet basil seedlings that I planted on the 25th and uh, they're doing really well. They seem to really enjoy this soil mix. They're coming up a, a beautiful vibrant darker green uh, just typical of the basil plant and they're really starting to um, get into this swing of their growth. As you can see some of the smaller ones down in there below are uh, the lights being blocked by the larger ones so their growth has been stunted. But I'll probably transplant these into individual pots and either give them to the neighbors or just try to cultivate them for as long as I can so I can have fresh basil which is something I use to cook with a lot. Over here 
in this big pot here. It's actually somewhat of an experiment that I'm working on uh, with using uh, fundamental patterns, uh, geometrical patterns that are found throughout nature, uh, such as the flower of life. And what I did is, uh, with points corresponding to the flower of life, I planted seeds. So there's one in the center, the two on this side, two this way, and then in between these two diagonally. So um, all together, there is um, nine plants in this pot, but uh, uh, besides these two basil plants, all of them will be green onions, so space won't, won't be much of a problem. And the reason I'm doing this experiment is because I read online on a blog about a gardener that tried doing this, and he said it, it led to some pretty interesting results. Um, what happened was, is the plant in the center seemed to grow much larger and much faster than the plant surrounding it. And it's just interesting to see how these certain shapes that are present in our, uh, throughout our reality, um, can affect, um, different aspects of life such as growth or um, in terms of circuitry like energy conduction and things like that. So I'm really interested to see how this experiment goes. I really want, uh, I'm really hoping that it does have the same effects and the plants in the center grow more rapidly just because that would indicate some sort of increase in energy through this pattern into the central point which would be an extremely interesting result. Over here, I have some lavender that is uh, really taking off and really starting to love this soil mix. The aloe is doing really good well. Uh, we're doing really well now. Uh, needed a little water. The leaves are starting to brown. But now it's uh, definitely a nice vibrant green. Uh, with the exception of some of the tips here. Uh, Frang. Cucumbers are doing well. They're probably about to get staked up soon. I've been just starting a, a lot of basil because, like I said, I use it to cook with a lot, so I have a bunch of those. And over here is probably what I'm the most excited for, which is these habanero hot peppers. Love hot peppers. Gonna make some hot sauce with these, give it to friends and family. And I'm, I'm just really excited for the, uh, for the process. Inside here there's a cucumber plant that snaked its way down. It grew in the middle. But honestly, this, this pot's getting so overcrowded, I might just have to uh, clip the cucumber to save my peppers. Only time will tell. But that cucumber is certainly getting big. Okay guys, so that is my organic soil video. Um, periodically I'll be posting updates with more information it's just there's way too much information to cover in one video so um, I hope you guys enjoyed the information I've presented you and uh, please like and subscribe there'll be much more to come Enlightened Arts signing off live love and learn